Good morning. Nisi, I miss you. I've been seeing you. Hey, Tristan, Dante, I haven't been seeing you either. Demetrius has amazing countertops. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm sitting up here like, look at the countertops. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Hmm? I have to change the way how they... How the countertops go? Yeah, yeah. They're yeah, gorgeous. Like, Are you serious? They installed them in the wrong house. <laughs> You're kidding me. Yeah, it was before, the, it was the people that owned it before me, yes. they installed them, um, the people that came out to install them, they were supposed to be in another house. And, but once you install them, you, you can't take them out. Yeah, so they, they got them. Yeah. <laughs> and you didn't get charged. charge. Right? No, 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 no. That was a blessing. That's mm -hmm. what favor is. God, that was God yeah. doing something for you supernaturally. <laughs> yeah. Before oh my I God. Even, before I even got the house, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like oh my, your house is dope. Like yeah. it's really dope. Thank good morning, y'all. Good morning. Good morning. I'm gonna introduce my guest, but you guys know I always start with the scripture first, and I wanted to read Proverbs 31 and um, 23. People always talk about the virtuous woman, but with the virtuous woman was a virtuous man. And it says her husband is respected at the city gate where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. And the more that I've been reading and studying the scripture, just God has been showing me how important her husband was. Um, we talk about the nobility of who she was, but God has been showing me how important her husband was. So welcome to Coffee and Conversations. If this is your first time logging on, I'm Lakeisha Johnson. Please make sure you go share the video live and i want to introduce you to my very special guest this morning demetrius williams thank you good morning good for morning. hanging out with me this morning and letting me invade your kitchen and your house and i'm going to um before we get into your story i'm going to ask you what i ask everybody who is demetrius williams oh wow um i'm, I'm simple uh, i mean i just i'm just a guy from a, from a small town it just i guess i guess you would say with big dreams that just mm. you know i just want to help people and and, and be able to take care of my family and, and, and just be a blessing to other people. And you are from you are from a small town. Where are you from? Osceola. Osceola. Where is Osceola? Northeast Arkansas. Okay. Yeah. So you, you mentioned something. You said you're just a guy with big dreams. And I think when I first met you, you were working for Steve Landers? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Steve Landers. And uh, how, how long did you work for them? Uh, almost five years. Okay. Um, yeah, almost five years. Yeah. And then you made some other decisions, and we're going to talk about that just in a minute. You mentioned kids. How many kids do you have? I have two. Okay, yeah, two. two I am one on the way. And one on the way, a new baby. A new baby on the way. He did, he did a reset. Yeah. So um, when in this process, um, you got a very unique story. And I'm going to tell you how I first, uh, one of the first things I saw um, on social media was you dropped a badge. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. You yeah. dropped a badge. You yeah. dropped a badge. And I looked at the badge, and the badge a actually happened to be... From being incarcerated, yep. correct? Mm -hmm. Tell me what happened. Um, yeah, the badge was my um, my ADC uh, ID from Arkansas Department of Corrections. Um, after leaving the military, um, actually while I was still in the military, I um, I came home from Iraq, started hanging with the wrong crowd, uh, picked up a bunch of habits that I shouldn't have had. Um, I eventually, you know, just just making a bunch of bad decisions and. Um, those bad decisions ended up catching up with me, and that's how I ended up prison in prison for uh, five years. How you were in prison five years? I didn't know it was that yeah. long. Yeah, like um, state or federal? State. And what was that like for you? Like, did you uh, feel like all your dreams had quit, ended because you went to prison? Uh, yeah. In the beginning, I did because uh, I was I was I was young. Uh, I was twenty three, I think, when I went to prison. Um, well, the first, couple, is, yeah. first couple of years, I kind of felt like everything was over with. But um, as I got closer to coming home, um, I could see kind of the light at the end of the tunnel. That's when I started getting some confidence about, you know, things that I could still do. Because that kind of strips your dignity. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> you don't have to tell me. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm just saying yeah, I can uh, imagine. Like, I've never yeah. been in prison, but that's, I, that it strips your dignity. Absolutely. When I had, um, when I got pregnant with my son and I was 18, 19 in mm -hmm. college and not married, mm -hmm. it was very hard for me. Yeah. You feel me? And yeah. so it stripped my dignity. Like, it made me feel like, okay, is this the end of who I am? Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Am I just limited to this particular point in my life? Absolutely. And you, and if something doesn't occur, occur that gives you a glimpse, Absolutely. you feel me? Then I think you get yourself into a position where you're like okay this is just it and this is where yeah. I'm gonna be yeah. um, and it, for me it was like my mother and my grandmother you know this is not the end of you mm -hmm. and me having to rethink myself or revamp myself to make myself yeah. say you know what 
yeah, this is this wasn't the best decision. Yeah. You didn't do the best thing. But at the same time, Keisha, this is not your finale. Yeah. Right. This is right. not the end. So what made you get some gumption about you and just... Because I'm going to tell you something. Mm-hmm. Um, I see people all the time who come out and leave prison and... Oh, right. they yeah. Yeah. yeah, they go... The recidivism rate is high. Yeah. They go back. Yeah. They don't... Um, they don't even think like we're going to talk about all the stuff you're doing right now, but they definitely don't think um, I see a lot of people who hide their pain. And so mm-hmm. what was so dope for me about you? You put it out there and was like, look, it, it, this is who I was. It, it, it took a while to it took a while to, to, to get to that point. Uh, I believe the first few years after I <clears throat> after I came home, no one really but my friends and uh, my close friends and family. Really, no one really knew. That I'd been to prison. They just okay. they just thought, and you know, I moved moved back to Arkansas. And, okay, <laughs> you know, I just kind of okay. allowed that to be my story until um, I graduated from Euler in 2014. Okay, and when I graduated, uh, sitting on uh, Euler on the on the floor, waiting to cross the stage, I just started typing, and wow. and and I just I just felt like it was the time to kind of share my Tell story. Tell your story. Yeah. yeah. And, well, I want to admonish you because your story is the story of someone else. You know what I'm absolutely. saying? And I don't think we realize how much our story is tied to someone else. Absolutely. And so the the goal all the time and I tell anybody if the the enemy can get you in prison to your past mm-hmm. To where you can't talk about your past, you're never going to walk into the fullness of your future. Like, you're never going to be able to tap into the fullness of what you're supposed to be tapping into. Because your past has you in prison. You don't want nobody to know. You're being secretive. And then you put yourself in a position where it's like, okay. And 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 that can happen easily because, you know, we're... Especially with men. Yeah, you're you're afraid of of how how people will react. You're afraid of how, um, what people will think of you. Uh, My biggest thing was, when I, you know, I just wanted to be better than I was mm-hmm. and I wanted people to, to see me you know for who I was now before they knew about you know kind of knew about my past yeah. and when I started telling people people didn't even believe me <laughs> like you know because I because they you know because of who they who, who they gotten to know me as yes and that was important for me well the very first time you told it like when you were typing on that mm-hmm. floor were you scared were you like oh my was, gosh do I take this bad do I retract I wasn't I wasn't scared um I was nervous I'd mm-hmm. say nervous but I just I just, I just felt God telling me that it was, it was time to kind of find it. That's, that's been the biggest thing for me. When I, the moves that I've made over the last six, seven, eight years, mm-hmm. I just, you know, people may think that I just do stuff, but I don't. I feel God telling me that this is what, this is what kind of what needs yeah, to happen. Yeah, you're letting and, that spirit yeah, move and lead absolutely. you. Yeah, and, and that's kind of, that's kind of what happened because I had no. No uh, plans on telling. <laughs> I had no plans. Oh, I get on, it. I had no plans on telling anybody. <laughs> no, I get it, and I understand that better than anybody. A lot of the things that I share from a very transparent place, I don't want to tell. Right. Like I get up in the morning and I feel this pressure in right. my head, right. you know, and the right. Lord starts saying to me, "Share this," and I'm like, right. "Man, I'm not letting them know my business. Right. This is right. my personal business. This is my personal struggles. Right. These are my testimonies and things." And He's like, "But you'll never overcome." If you don't testify, right. and that's what it says in Revelations, right. I think it's 12 and 11, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb mm-hmm. and the word of our testimony. So the more that you tell the story, or even that you just reveal it to someone, right. sometimes everybody's story isn't for everybody, right. but maybe that the, the you just take time. And that's big of you for men, because y'all are different than us. We, we gab, don't talk. We gab, and y'all don't talk. Yeah, we don't talk. We don't talk. But that's, that's um, just just knowing how you know men struggle with communicating and talking yes. about things that they're dealing with and things that they're going through, um, that's that's why it's been important to me um you know because all of us are struggling with something yes and i've been i've been blessed beyond god i can't even i mean i just blessed been blessed beyond my wildest dreams i really feel like i'm I'm living you know kind of the dream and and i want people that have kind of had a similar path or you know maybe may a little bit different to to see that they can you know they don't have to settle for you know what their their life was and yeah they can kind of have you know what they want Yep. And you can't have what you want. You don't have to yeah. be limited. Well, this month is the month of the entrepreneur. And that's why I chose um, chose Demetrius is because I have been watching him, his story it evolved. And we talked about you working for Steve Landers. Mm-hmm. And then something else occurred, right? You were mm-hmm. working for Steve Landers. And you and I talked about it. You had this like... Okay, three, 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 yeah. okay. <laughs> three to five year plan. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, had another yeah. plan, but you wanted to start some other yeah, things, yeah, right? Yeah. And what was what was um, the what what did you decide? Since uh, probably 2016, my goal had been um, in my mind. My goal was in three to five years that I was gonna um, eventually leave the car business and kind of um, be able to do my own thing at my own pace. Mm-hmm. And that that's been since 2016. That's been my plan. Um, summer 2016. But uh, summer, you know, that was my plan. 
the summer of 2017, things started to happen that kind of, well, I, I say things started to happen. God just basically put it on my heart that, you know, three to five years was your plan. Yeah. You know, that's 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 not my plan. I like how he messes us up. Like, yeah. we think we planned out. We're like, okay, in 2016, we're going to do this. In 2017, yeah. I'm going to do this. In yeah. 2018, I'm going to do this. And God is simply saying... We're not talking about your time. Like. Yeah, talking We're talking about, about my yeah. time. Like, yeah. What was that like for you? Because yeah. you did have your plan. Um, like, it, it was, I, I don't even know how to explain it because I don't think, um, at that moment, financially, I don't think that I was ready to, to, to just kind of jump out there and start doing a bunch of stuff that I really wanted to do. Um, but I, I just, I've learned to just trust what he puts on my heart because I, he hadn't failed me. That's he had big. Failed me. He had That's me. big. But, um. I, I just, you know, I, of course I pray, I prayed about it, and and I just received what he was, what he was giving me, and um, I just made the decision that, um, you know, to make the step to start preparing to do stuff on my own, um, yeah. preparing these ideas that I had um, to just, you know, help them come to fruition. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then you begin to even think about what could you do to help other people, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, God, I can't really remember where. Well, I, I mean, I always hear stories about how. Uh, people that have been to prison struggle with uh, finding employment and <clears throat> that really wasn't, I had a few roadblocks but that really wasn't my story because um, I just had, you know I had a ton of people supporting me uh, my fraternity um, shout them out, go to sh- shout out shout out to Case yeah, <laughs> yeah, go to shout to your fraternity I had a ton of help from my fraternity um, my, my family, my mom, my dad my sisters, yeah. uh, my aunt um, I just I had a ton of help that most people didn't didn't really. And I'm a veteran, so there are a lot of benefits that veterans get that most people don't get. So, you know, the struggle to find employment wasn't my struggle to the degree that it is for some people coming home. So, you know, I wanted to. Oh, it's okay. I'm kind of I you know I wanted to be able to to help um, you know people that had had a similar background with you know being in prison with um, you know finding employment. That's yeah. and that's big, um, yeah. and I think that's bigger than anything for me because it's easy for you to get about yours, yeah. create wealth for yourself, yeah. and then don't 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 help anybody yeah. around you. And sometimes we'll be like, "Well, I'm just watching out for my kids, or I'm creating yeah. a, creating a legacy or generation that's for my kids." Yeah. That's easy to that's do. Easy to do. But it what, what but what's not easy to do is for you to create an opportunity and chance for someone else yeah. who where you may just encourage them or where you may put yeah. them in a position that just says, "Hey, you know what? I'm not creating this just for myself." Uh, when I started L J Ministries, we have something called ministry in action and ministry in action is us in the streets and that's a lot of what my ministry is is a lot of people see me teach coffee and conversations right but what I do is I've adopted Coleman School and I go down there every Thursday and I mentor young girls and then of course my nonprofit organization Sickle Cell Support Service but it was the ability to push past whatever had happened or link me to Mm -hmm. my story so that I could get out and be Christ in the streets Mm -hmm. you feel me like it's easy to be Christ in the pulpit it's easy to be Christ in the church but the example of his hands and his feet on this earth what gift and talent do you have or what business sense do you have that you can take and put it at the table and create an opportunity for someone to be able to come in and say you know what i need this help um i talk to single mothers all the time i just they get drawn to me right Mm -hmm. and they'll call me and they're like i don't know how to do a resume you know Mm -hmm. a lot of the women that um, you'd be amazed how many people don't Know how to do a resume, yeah, Yeah, and and that that, um, our moms that take care of kids with sickle cell disease, and so they have some other limitations and some barriers, and so now it has me creatively thinking about, okay, what other programs can I create for these moms Mm -hmm. so that they can be employable, Mm -hmm. so that they can get um, get what they need, so that they're able to tap into you know more, and so I applaud you for for moving into situations and creating opportunities. Mm -hmm. I know you do some things in real estate. Can we talk about that? Yeah, okay. Um, I, years ago, I started, I watching, I started watching uh, HGTV, and uh, I, I guess I just, you know, became drawn to just, you know, flipping houses and just the process. So, um, you know, I was drawn to it, and um, 2016, I think we bought our first um, uh, investment property, okay. and, and uh, 2017 was pretty good for us. We uh, um, started flipping houses, mm-hmm. and, so, and and that's kind of, I think it's it, it's a... Uh, I don't know what it will become. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's it's, but I, I think it's gonna become something good. But it, right now, it's a passion thing of mine. It's mm-hmm. you know it's something I enjoy doing, and um, I'm excited to see where it's going. But it's giving you property. Yeah. It's yeah. giving you the opportunity yeah. to even we were talking about rental houses. Yeah. It's giving you opportunities yeah. 
to provide housing for people who may not be able yep. to rent yep. um, because you get to choose who comes in your right. house or right. you get to make right. a decision. And so that I think is really dope too. I think if I'm, I just believe this year, God is showing me that this is the year of the entrepreneur, Absolutely. right? Like, Absolutely. and if, if, if we're going to really do this, I don't want to sit around and wait on somebody who can tell me how much money I can make and right. how much I can do. Right. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. What right. I can right. do for myself when I can come into work. Like, right. and, and I mean, it just, it's just and, a hard thing. And, you know, it's I, I absolutely have loved what I've been doing for the last um, five years and working with uh, Steve Landers. Uh, it has been amazing. It's been a blessing to me. I've learned um, not just about the car business, just, you know, um, just financial education, uh, investing, um, just making smart moves um, with your money and, and, and business and learning how to take care of people, how to take care of customers. That's so good. that's been, I, I can't put a price on that. Um, but... It's just, I mean, just looking for ways to just, you, you know, you can always, you can, you can, you can be on your job for 20 years and, you know, you show up to work Monday morning and you get that email. That you're not going to be there anymore. We, we no longer need your services. Yeah. I yeah. mean, UAMS just let off 600 sure. employees. And that's, that's, uh, when I, when I think about stuff that I want to do and, um, you know, fields that I want to go, go into, I always think about, you know, what if, you know, what if something happens to the car business where, I can't provide um, for my family anymore. What if I, what if I, you know, what if I fall and, and, and break a leg or I break, you know, I, I can't physically go to work and do what I've been doing. You know, how am I going to take care of my family? Mm -hmm. And so that's why, you know, entrepreneurship is, is, um, I think it's something that. <laughs> but what about the risk? Talk to somebody about the risk because when people talk about like I, I when when I made a decision to, I taught for 12 years and when I felt the Lord telling me to leave teaching, I was mm -hmm. like, you notice know, like how I take care of my kids, you know, and it's just me. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah. you notice know, how I take care of my kids. Yeah. You notice know, it. Are you serious? Like God, are you serious? Yeah. Like, are you so serious? And when I made the move, he come, so, so much confirmation came mm -hmm. behind it. What do you tell the person that's overthinking the risk? Because it's easy to overthink the risk. Mm -hmm. What do you tell the person that's overthinking the risk? I was. It was crazy. It's last night I saw a girl on my timeline. She was, you know, she's in the process of opening, her, starting her own business. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I was rolling, and I just, and I kind of commented kind of my two cents of what I thought some ideas that would help her I would mean um just man just just prayer and just 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 asking God just kind of show you what I don't know what it is I, I've been blessed to be able to receive signs you know it, it might be, it might just be simple stuff but 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 if it's something I'm struggling with and and, and I get a breakthrough in that area. Yeah. That's my sign. Yeah. <laughs> like, let's, let's go. That's no, that's my, real. That's, that's, that's. Because it doesn't mean there's not going to be a struggle. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. mean there's yeah. not going to be a struggle. It's not, it doesn't mean something's going to present mm -hmm. itself. But if you yeah. press into it, yeah. the break, when I first started Coffee and Conversations, mm -hmm. man, I had like 10 people on. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then I just kept doing it. But, mm -hmm. but God told me from the beginning, he was like, don't focus on the yeah. numbers. You just get out. You share the word. You keep moving. You know? It's something that I, I heard a few weeks ago. I hadn't heard it before. And I, I started kind of use it a lot um delay does not mean deny delay does not and, uh, mean i denied. love it it's just you know we it's easy for us to you know you know we hit, we hit a roadblock and we're just like you know what that's it i'm done yes man and know. we don't realize how much we give up when we do that like man. like if a roadblock occurs and we like er, oh well that yeah. means it, that i'm not supposed to do yeah. it it doesn't mean yeah. that you're not supposed to do it it means that you need to pause pray yeah. and look Re for reevaluate yeah. why you hit this roadblock yeah. why does this happen i do that all the time my nonprofit organization was kind of at this low mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so i just began to get asked i said what's going on here and he said you're trying to carry too much you got this over here you got this and you're a mom and mm -hmm. you're a single mom mm -hmm. and he said so i want you to build your team find five people to mm -hmm. put on the team and this team is going to make this happen mm -hmm. and that's what i did i built my team and we met the other day and when i left i got it i was like lord i get what you're trying to tell me this team is what mm -hmm. so that i can put my focus and emphasis emphasis over here and i'm going to mm -hmm. trust this team and manage this team so i definitely think pushing past roadblocks mm -hmm. are so important because we'll take a, a pause or yeah, a stop yeah. you know what i'm saying and just i use as, as an example uh one of the houses that i'm flipping right now um, my budget for remodeling was was about thirty grand, and um, as we got close to that budget, as we got close to to hitting that that thirty grand, last month my contractor just disappeared on me. Oh, oh wow! Just disappeared on me. Like missing, am I? Like, can't find. No answer calls. Um, I mean, I, I can't find him, and and so, <laughs> you know, this this is a house that I was supposed to have on the market this month, and and and, and this money is just sitting out here. And I'm getting quotes to finish it up, and I'm looking at having to spend another twenty five grand 
Oh, I'm finishing this house, and oh my gosh. I'm, I'm kind of, you know, I, and so now I'm having this. I'm having to decide. I'm having to make some <laughs> wait. Wait on wait on wait on God to show me, you know, kind of what direction I need to move in, um, because I also have this this trucking company that, you know, I need to get rolling. And I need yeah. to be putting some money into. <laughs> Tell us so, about the trucking company. Um, Redemption Trucking. Um, I, that that name. I, I promise you that name came straight from God. <laughs> it okay. was it was uh it's just just about second chances. Just uh And yeah, it's so funny chances. because I didn't know that was the name of your company mm-hmm. and you and I were messaging. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we'll start having these relationship yep. dialogues yep. Yep. or yep. something and messaging back and forth and I said this is my year for being redeemed. Yep. And you was like, Wow, that's the name of my company, yep. my trucking company. Yep. Redemption, Redemption Trucking Company. Trucking. And so you started you started the I mean it, it has your component, mm-hmm. but it's about second chances for what kind of people. Yep. Um, uh, you know, people that that doesn't have the you know the best background, people that may have been in prison, just just people that just just deserve second chances. That's dope. Um, just just deserve second chances. People that um, you know, some companies aren't just fighting to hire, or people aren't just you know fighting to give another chance to, um, because you know that's. You know, but sometimes we just need a break. Sometimes we just need a second chance. Sometimes we just need a one person to come back and say, I don't care about your past. I don't care about what you did in the past. I don't care what happened. I want to judge you fairly from your now. Absolutely. Um, And that's what you're saying. Hey, I'm going to give you a chance to earn some money for your family, to earn some money for yourself. And even for me, for like men and not just women, for a man who has had such a bad past Mm -hmm. to feel like he's dignity, Mm -hmm. to feel like he can provide, to feel like he's not just limited to his place. That does. That something does. for a man's confidence and, and the reality of it is the guys that you know guys that that uh, come home from prison uh, it's not that they it's not that all of them you know want to be in the streets it's not that all of them want to live a life of crime it's just you know when you when you you go to apply for 10 15 20 jobs and all of them tell you no because of you jim, jim alley he owns Gilmore's coffee shop he said that's how okay. jesus chose okay. his disciples right. that's real cool right. yeah it but, is jim but that you you know, after you hear no 10, 15, 20 times, you know, and you still, you still have children and a family to provide for, you know, you kind of ask, what do I, well, what do I do? Yes. I mean, I don't want to do this, but, yeah. but you know, it's just, you know, so that's, that's kind of the, you know, the mindset I had when, when we came up with, um, redemption trucking. That's so yeah. dope. Yeah. Like I, when you can make money, but when you can make money and make impact, yeah. mm-hmm. that's dope because it shows how selfless you are. So I'm applauding you for not being Thank selfish. You. you could have been like, I'm just getting this money myself. I'm going to get mine. I'm going to go. Yeah. <laughs> but you said no. Yeah. And yeah. I think true hearts of true entrepreneurs who are centered, focused, yeah. God or not, I think they know that the give back is so important. You know what I'm saying? I think they know that that once you, I think, I think that's why I have such a hard time or like why I know that the enemy tries to use our past to hinder mm-hmm. us, to not share. Mm-hmm. Because what happened to your past mm-hmm. probably is a catalyst for you for mm-hmm. a business mm-hmm. for an organization Absolutely. for something you're looking for like you couldn't click it you could find the dots that's like like one of my passions is helping people find what's in them like mm-hmm. finding that gift finding that thing taking that concept and idea and i created a business called mm-hmm. yo girl inc i don't push it a lot right mm-hmm. but it, and, 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 I, and i say i'm the get out the box specialist <laughs> so i'm gonna help you get out your box <laughs> and live life at a capacity so that you can see the full reward of what you're doing. Absolutely. I don't want to just go to work and just come home. Right. You know, right, you feel right. me? And then you like, it's, it's cool, but yes. you just come home. Right. I've seen CEOs of Fortune 500 companies who have been there for years and then all of a sudden they leave, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And people are like, you just left all this money? And they're like, but I'm yeah. happy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I'm happy I'm doing something, I'm happy I'm giving back. I'm glad you said that. One of the, 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 the best things that I got from 2017 was and this is something that I never thought I would say that money isn't everything I learned that in 2017 and I never thought that I would feel that way but it just I just I don't know it came out of nowhere that you know you can I mean money is good and it's good to be able to take care of your family and provide you know a life that that you can enjoy but it's just I just at this point, I just want to be happy, man. And you have a dope house. <laughs> I was like, this is dope. <laughs> and I mean, and I know you have some nice things. Thank you. Thank but, you. but the whole thing is, you, it's not saying that you don't get to experience mm-hmm. those things, mm-hmm. but your priorities change. And you like, yeah. I keep making all this money, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But if I'm not making impact, yeah. if I'm not making difference, yeah. if I'm not, you know what I'm yeah. saying? At the end of the day, if I make all this money, my family's not right. happy. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? If I'm right. not sharing in a relationship, um, it, it just makes it just makes all the difference. As an example, just like if... Um, if I hadn't, you know, over the last couple of months made some of the decisions that I've made to 
kind of venture out and kind of do my own thing, I wouldn't be here this morning. I'd be be at work. Yeah. You know, I'd be at work and yeah. and um, you know, I'd be providing for my family, but I wouldn't be happy. Yeah. yeah, and being happy is a part of it, and I think I think even for us, we we because of things that have happened in our past, mm-hmm. we think God doesn't want us to be happy, mm-hmm. and God is waving His hands like, pay attention yeah. to what I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. I came so that you can have life and have it more mm-hmm. abundantly. I came so that you can. Okay, then. Mm-hmm. sorry about that. I came so I came. I usually turn those off. I came so that you can experience the right. more and right. enjoy this. It makes no sense right. to make all the money in the world, but be, then absolutely mm-hmm. not be happy yeah. or be able to enjoy it or be able to just. It, it just makes no sense in, right. um, in the world. What would you leave the people with? They. What would you tell them about starting your own businesses? What would you tell them about? Just them, them tapping into the more of who they are, because you could have resolved after prison that this yeah. was it. Yeah. You could have resolved and said, "Okay, I went to prison and I can only work to this level." But you did something and said, "You know what? Oh, okay, and it, <laughs> this is it. Yep, this is my past. This is what happened. This is what's done." But I'm not stopping there. Where would you tell somebody who keeps roadblocking themselves? Because I think a lot of times it's not people roadblocking us; mm-hmm. it's we roadblock yeah, ourselves. Absolutely. Um, one of the biggest things for me has been um, just surrounding myself around people that want to win too. That's that's oh, that's, that's been good. that's been huge. You can't. I mean, you can't. It's hard to win when when everyone around you has a negative attitude or everyone around you, you know, are just doing, are just going to work like robots, you know, paying bills and just you know just getting by. It's hard to it's hard to get away from that. Mm-hmm. Um, that mentality unless you surround yourself with people that are doing something different and that that was the blessing of being around the car business and just meeting and just getting out over the last year and just meeting different people on social media that have taken risk and and just kind of decided that, that you know what that's not the life for me because entrepreneurs beget other entrepreneurs true, true, true. you know Absolutely. what I'm saying and Absolutely. I think as entrepreneurs you definitely have to be tapped into people around you who yeah. are taking risks because mm-hmm. regular people go to jobs well, regular, and I'm not saying regular like they're important but, but yeah. people go to regular jobs Right, right, yep. and who like the safety behind it? They're not understanding when you're an entrepreneur and you're dreaming and you're right. talking about. Right. Like I have so many different other things, you know, that God has mm-hmm. been dealing with me about. He's like, "What are you waiting on to start?" I'm like, mm-hmm. "What? You're not gonna know if this is gonna be successful, right. Keisha, if you don't move and don't move, in move into it. If you don't try it, if you don't put the things in mm-hmm. place." But I've definitely found for me finding other women or men mm-hmm. who are in business or who have the vision of being an entrepreneur, entrepreneur. Right. to be able to have conversations and dialogues with them just about basic things. Mm-hmm. You know, makes makes the difference, and sometimes it leaves you more encouraged because you can walk away and be like, "Oh my gosh, yeah, thank you! It yeah, wasn't just me." You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Or I, I get the long mm-hmm. nights, or I get mm-hmm. the sometimes because if you're gonna really get about it, like I'm focused at another level. I made a shift this week and made a decision to be focused at even a more intensity if I want to mm-hmm. see this thing grow. If you're gonna be an entrepreneur, your life, your level of focus is totally different mm-hmm. than um, somebody just that's geared towards eight to five because you're taking risks. You gotta think. Your home often becomes your office. I've okay, had two two days this week where I didn't sleep at all. Yeah. Focus. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just getting yeah, it. Just up all night getting it. Well, yeah. thank you for letting me hang out and invade your kitchen. Yeah. Um, I'm so in love with these countertops. I'm like, okay, <laughs> um, I don't want to. I, I have to think for black. Anyway, anything you want to leave leave our view, leave, leave with our viewers before I log off? Um, just don't don't be afraid to take um, to take take risks. Um, prayer prayer um, has kind of you know helped me make things a little bit easier when I make my decisions. But just not being afraid to take risks and, and surrounding yourself with. Surround yourself with good people that that want you to win, um, that that champion your winning. Um, that's that's been huge. My family and close friends have been amazing when it comes to the decisions that I've made. Um, that's been huge for me. Let me ask you yeah. something, because we always do this relationship mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. What type of woman does an entrepreneur need? <laughs> no, no, I'm being serious. You uh, know what I'm saying? Because I can speak from the point of a man. Because sometimes if you run yeah. into, like, what kind of woman does an entrepreneur need? Because if you're going to be an entrepreneur, it really takes a certain kind of woman absolutely. to um, connect to you, to be able to, to allow you to do what you right, do. Right, so right, what right, kind right. of woman does an entrepreneur right. need? Um, I think what's crazy is over the last few weeks, I've been uh, seeing these uh, clips on social media um, from different speakers talking about um, you know, the type of woman a man needs. And what, um, the other day when we were at the coffee shop, what's his name? Uh, uh, the gentleman, the older gentleman? Jim. Jim, yeah, and Jim was talking about... No, uh, John, 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 big John. Okay, I'm yeah, big yeah, John. just talking uh-huh. about, um, you know, just having a woman that you that you know um, you can trust to handle handle business. Um, yes. That can, 
that can get things done and that can handle, you know, taking care of the home and taking care of the children without you having to worry about that. Yeah. Um, just being able to, someone that you can, that you can trust and you know they'll be able to get things done and you don't have to worry about it because you got all the stuff over here mm -hmm. that you got going through. And respect your hustle and Absolutely. knows that you're taking Absolutely. risks. They got to be able to take a risk with Absolutely. you. They've got to be okay Absolutely. and understand that we make $50,000 this month. Yeah. We might make 10000 next yeah. month. We might make five. Or we might make five the next month. Right, right, right. I mean, and it's very right. different for me, for us with the women. Um, I get, I don't know. I, it's my hustle. I, I always say, somebody, I saw a teacher one time and said, my hustle, I hope my hustle don't offend nobody. <laughs> I like that. I know. I like yeah, I saw somebody I like on a t-shirt. I was like, I hope my hustle don't offend nobody. And the the whole thing is it's it's so like because you guys are seem to be the provider when you run yeah. into a woman who's about it or who gets yeah. her hustle on men are always like oh you too you know oh you too that's just some that's just some men all, all men i don't think all, i think those in my opinion they're insecure that that's, okay. that that's my opinion because it doesn't, you know, hustle doesn't offend me. Yeah. I, I, Let me find somebody I, who hustles I, as much. Your thing is, if I, I got somebody that hustles as much, yeah. 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 Or, you know, that that can be, um, because in, I, I know me, and I know that I don't need to have a ton of stuff on my plate. That, yeah. That, because, you know, just uh, as an example, paying bills and keeping the house clean and stuff like that, that's not stuff that I need to worry about. No, it makes sense. Not, yeah, it's, it's not stuff that I need to worry yeah. about. Buying groceries, I don't need to worry about that. Yeah. So, I need that aspect taken away that that doesn't need to be my responsibility because i got a million other things that will determine how many groceries we can get yeah. no, <laughs> that's good because that also get. looks yeah. from a perspective of and i'm not using the word traditional sometimes mm -hmm. households are not as traditional but that sounds more right. like a traditional household and i get that um it's funny when people run into me and realize how domesticated i am mm -hmm. and i bake and i do other things and somebody one time oh. i said yes yeah, shut up <laughs> so one time like i my girls my close girls know that about me that i'm home first like this yeah. coffee and conversation thing is cool you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. ministry cool my nonprofit cool but i love being with my kids yeah. i love going yeah. home like when i pick my kids up at 3 30 that's yeah. it i'm mommy yeah. you know what i'm saying and i'm cooking dinner and i'm doing all these other things mm -hmm. and so it's good but i think when you're dating someone that's an entrepreneur or you're seeing someone that's an entrepreneur that you guys need to have those realistic conversations about right. the expectations right, right, and the right. relationship mm -hmm. because I remember when Jermaine took the risk and started our nonprofit mm -hmm. organization it was a risk right but I had to be in position to support his dream mm -hmm. I had to know what that looks like from my perspective mm -hmm. so that I could be what I needed to mm -hmm. be to him right. in this situation right. Right. you know right. Right. so that when he was up at two three four in the morning that I could be rubbing his back or right. patting and right. encouraging right. him right. going baby you got this you know because I taught you know I just went to work at nine to five well, I so, so appreciate you so much for coming in, for sharing your story. Um, you can, we have some links to how to get in touch with him. Odell saying that he needs a cake. <laughs> Odell, I make this double chocolate cake that is just layered and dripping chocolate mm. that is so amazing and I make these crack chocolate chip cookies that my kids are on me now about um, getting those done so I do I love to make I love to make, and I like my house clean mm. um, so but but I think you have that's to good. have those that's clarity <laughs> I know but I think you have to have and be clear in that in the beginning yeah, yeah absolutely I just yeah. have seen people who have um, come into relationships with entrepreneurs and they miss it all the time. And I've had women talk to me and say, well, money ain't always. And I'm like, but you yeah. knew this. But and you, you got to have yeah. this conversation about what's my role? Yeah. How do I add to this? And what's my right. value right. in this? Right. That's where starting your own ministry, starting your own business or whatever. Yeah. If everybody is clear coming to the table, right. then I think it puts us into the position. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Of where we can have a successful relationship, where we can build these business. If she has a role in the business or not, because mm -hmm. Sometimes the spouse doesn't necessarily have to have a role in right. the business. It's just that you're my wife, right. not necessarily my business partner, right. that you're my wife. And so that's important, too. Right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us for Coffee and Conversation. Again, this is my guest, Demetrius Williams. I will see you guys back here Monday morning at 5 a.m. for our daily devotional. You know um, what I'm going to say. Go be loved. Hey, if you're logging on, they are they, they say big things happen in Texas. We are taking Pillow Talk to Texas. We will be in Texas the 26th and the 27th. We still have room for some of you to get your registration, but don't hold on long. Go get registered for this event. It's $35 for either Friday, $35 for Saturday. Saturday, or if you're somebody that's bold, you're like, nope, I want both sessions. Ask some woman who's attended Pillow Talk how much Pillow Talk has impacted her. And who, beloved, I saw you say that it is God is the God of second chances. And I'm grateful for second chances. I'm grateful that Demetrius decided not to just eat for himself and help somebody else eat too. I will see you guys Monday morning at 5 a.m. You know what I'm going to tell you? Go be loved today. Let someone experience love through you. Love, peace, and blessings. Mm -hmm.